Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. Today we are going to answer that question that everybody's been asking. What's going on with the boat? Well, we have a huge update for you. Our Texas Speed LSX 454 engines. We got two of them. Oh, they're so cool. They're right, they're right behind me. I can't wait to show you them. Very excited about this. They have arrived and we're going to show you all about them and talk about them. But first, we got a lot of catching up to do. If you guys remember when we first started the Jumpicon, Oscar actually was stayed working on boat stuff. It was just Kyle and I that started doing the beginning work on the Jumpicon. And Oscar in that time got a ton of stuff built to the point where we were like, okay, now we need our real engines to move forward. Uh, so let me, let's go back to that time and I'll give you guys a little refresher and catch you up on the work that Oscar did. So let's get you guys caught up a little bit. Back in September of 2020, a really excited Chris was ready to take the yacht out to the ocean. The yacht is ready, we're behind schedule. Let's give it a go, let's see how this goes. We're gonna kick out of here and just start heading down the Willamette. So we made it 110 miles to the ocean. <laughs> we made it about 10 miles back and that's it. The engine is the engine is dead. And as you can see, it did not end well. So, so we got the yacht dry docked and started removing all the furniture to get access to the engines. And then we started pulling the damaged engine out of the yacht. Once we got the engine back to the shop, we started in on the teardown process and eventually found out the bad news. We had a damaged piston, we had a damaged cylinder wall, and really unfortunately is we had a lot of signs within our oil that we had damaged bearings on our crank. So at that point, we made the very controversial decision to replace the engines with gas ones. While we were waiting on the engines, we went after some restoration on the exterior of the boat, giving it a fresh paint job, making it look a lot better and more protected from the elements, sending a message back home to mom, and even protecting the exterior of our sacrificial anodes. Meanwhile, back at the shop, we ordered a bunch of new boat parts to try and solve the puzzle of using an LS engine mated to a marine transmission that is going to work for our application with marine exhaust and all the bells and whistles, along with a very custom accessory system and exhaust system that we fabricated up. And that leads us to the point where Oscar started working on building the engine frames. All right, we're back in the shop and we got the engine here floating. And uh, the next step is now that we have all the measurements, Oscar's gonna go ahead and recreate basically the mounting points that are on the boat. He's gonna build that into a stand. So what we're gonna see is like all the four mounting bolts that we had is all gonna be sitting here with the engine floating under that. That way we can then build the mounts for the engine to mount into the boat. wrapped up building this really amazing stand. So like I talked about, you can see the mounting bolts are at the correct angle. It's about 10 degrees offset. They're in the four corners exactly where they are. The height difference is exactly the same. And then he even went back here and emulated the shaft. Um, so this is a prop shaft emulation. Uh, and then we have our flange on here and that, that's actually bolted to our transmission. So this is, you know, the whole game plan. As we get into the boat, these things have a little bit of adjustment so we can do minute adjustments to make sure we nail that angle perfectly so now it's on to the phase of building 
the engine mount. So this is the boat, you know, emulating exactly what the boat is offering us. And now we got to build an engine mount. The game plan is to build, we're going to obviously tie into the stock engine mount spots right here. And we're going to come across here to support it. We're going to do a separate thing for the transmission mount. Once we're inside the boat, it's going to be another pocket style, just like the way the boat built these. We're going to build that and hold that separately. So uh, first Oscar's going to build some cups that go over this and we'll have a cup on each one of these corners. And then we can bend some tube around to build the part that's gonna tie into the engine. that's how we got to where we are today it's a uh, it's a little dusty but that'll that'll buff out we did steal the intake manifold and put it on the put it on the jump con but uh, let me show you around so you guys have seen the construction of the, the templated frame the engine mount but then Oscar came in and built our reservoir stuff so this is the heat exchanger this runs ocean water through it, but then it also runs the antifreeze that runs through the engine and the exhaust manifolds to cool them back down. So let me be very clear when I say this, there is no ocean water going through the engine. It's antifreeze. It's marine grade antifreeze, so it doesn't po poison any animals, but it's antifreeze. Um, so you have that as a massive heat exchanger meant for a 17 liter diesel, so it'll be able to do the job. We just have to make sure it doesn't do the job too well. And then we have, this is our transmission cooler, same type of deal. The transmission fluid runs from our trans right here over to that guy and the raw water comes through here so the re where we're at right now and why we stopped building on this stuff is because we got to take this whole unit as it sits right here somehow get it onto our trailer get it out to the boat and if we lift just this frame off of here it should set into our boat and what we need to do is check our clearances and make sure that we're good with an oil pan on here we need to check we need to check to make sure the transmission is going to clear and then height wise we need to make sure our heat exchanger is going to clear as well and once we know that everything clears literally all we have to do is some plumbing of the the water and the coolant system and this thing is ready to go into the boat but we need to put a texas speed engine in here instead of this junkyard place holder nonsense so with no further ado let me show you the texas speed engines these are dual texas speed lsx 454s these were designed from the ground up for our boat to be used in our boat everything from the cam specs to the block spec and how we built them out to get to a 454 that's 454 cubic inches which is the same as the old chevy big blocks but we have it in an lsx block which is pretty amazing these engines are both built with the highest quality components on earth, built by amazing engine builders being Texas Speed, and 
man, these are going to rip. I was looking at these today and I think these are the coolest thing I've ever been able to just like write a check and have delivered to my house. Like, it seems unreal. It doesn't seem like they're mine, but, but they are and we're gonna use them. So first I wanna jump into the sizing of these things. These are huge on a scale of just huge, huge for LSs. So your standard kind of LS like 5.3 is a 327 cubic inch block. It's actually 323, but GM calls it a 327. Doesn't really matter. These are 454. The larger engine that you have, the naturally the more torque it's going to want to build and that's why we went with such a huge engine i'm guessing if you're watching the series you know a thing or two about boats but if you don't boats want a lot of torque so we basically wanted to build the torquiest engines that we could and they definitely delivered that each one of these engines delivers 640 foot pounds of torque naturally aspirated with no supercharger or turbocharger we're basically starting this build off saying we're not going to use those if we need to later on if we need more power these engines can absolutely make it now these lsx blocks are very special they are tall deck they're actually taller this way so we could get a longer stroke so these are bored and strokes and that's how you get to that 454 the lsx block is basically a special order from gm and it's their performance engine block it's actually made out of steel rather than aluminum like like you'd see in say a corvette engine uh, so it can be a little bit stronger it has uh it gives it the ability to have more bolts and stuff that hold the um, crank in there so you don't have you know it's just going to be able to withstand a lot more abuse but when I say if we need more power we can make it I, I'm not exaggerating in any way these things with power adders on them an LSX block can reach 2,000 horsepower so we could in theory probably hit 2,000 I mean because this is a built bottom end again with the best quality parts in the world so if we wanted to make both of these hit 2,000 horsepower I bet it's possible it's just not exactly what we wanted for the boat application Race car, yes. Boat, we're just trying to get lots and lots and lots of reliability. So we're taking a block that can handle 2,000 and we're delivering much less on purpose for reliability sake. Horsepower wise, these babies come in at 750 horsepower a piece. That's again, without any power adders or anything on there. So 1500 horsepower and uh, what's the math on the torque? And I think 1280 foot pounds of torque out of this package right here. It's pretty incredible. So there are a lot of people that commented about us sticking with diesels because you needed the torque. Now, obviously these engines have a ton of torque, but people that actually know about engines and engine building and stuff like that know that torque is a calculation of horsepower and RPM. You can swap RPM zones to get more torque. That's why you downshift your car when you're driving up a hill, right? So with these, we have overall more horsepower, more torque than the boat engines that we took out of the boat. Um, but what we do need to do is uh, run them at a little bit higher RPM than what the boat engines used to do, which is no problem. The engine's gonna be more happy doing that. The transmission that we bought is gonna be more happy doing that. We also changed our gearing in our transmission to calculate everything outright. Overall, if my projections are correct, this will make the boat go overall 10 miles an hour faster than it was able to go in the beginning. It said in the magazine it was supposed to go 40. It really only would have capped out at 30. We would have been on the rev limiter for the engines, and now we should be able to get back up to that 40 if we want, which is really fast for a giant yacht. So Texas Speed obviously built us a beast of a set of engines for our, our boat and we are so thankful for them to be partnered with us and helping us out with this project. So there is a link in the description. I know, I already know in the comments, a lot of people are gonna say, oh, they, these took forever. Um, when we, it, it really came down to a few very, very small things. But again, we had a very unique block. See, I don't wanna call out any companies in particular because I know everybody's doing their best. But I'll tell you this, it wasn't Texas Speed that made these uh, take so long. It was the components that we decided to use and it has to do with being a tall deck. We needed to order some special parts and those parts were back ordered because uh, when COVID hit, stimulus hit, everybody started ordering engine parts and the whole industry is backed up and I know this from just everybody that I talked to. Uh, so it definitely wasn't Texas Speed's fault but you know what? I don't think that the other guys whose fault it really was deserve any shame either. I mean, I'm happy for these guys. These are American companies that are doing well and business is going well. So I'm happy for them. So I'm not even going to point them out, but you know, we had to wait our turn and we got the components eventually. And you know, if we were just building the jump a con while we waited, it wasn't the end of the world. It's 
just just around right in, like about a month month and a half from now is, is key starting to boat season in Oregon anyways honestly this time of year last time I think I used my boat one time so we're not missing out on a lot but anyways the whole reason I was saying that is just huge thanks to Texas Speed and the link is going to be in the description if you guys want to check them out if you need an LS build for whatever you are building you're going to want to hit them up so if you guys have watched the last episode uh, know that we did go out to the boat yard to get our trailer back and to get rid of our well we didn't get rid of our old diesel engine yet um gosh I, i'll say this one more time we have one of the good the good diesel engines still in the boat we're gonna pull it out very very shortly here and if anybody wants it you can have it for free are we gonna get money if we recycle it we're gonna get money for the steel if we recycle it. um honestly people don't even want them for free it's crazy so uh we're getting rid of those i did check on the boat though inside and out and everything is looking good so i'm really happy that it's nice and safe and everything's going okay. It is it is filling up with water though. So the time is now, we have to start back in on the boat project. So we're gonna be going between boat episodes and jump a con episodes. Hopefully you guys will all be happy with that. But I mean, hey, it's what we have to do. We are, we are, we can't let the boat sit any longer. And I'm really excited to get it on the water. So in the next episode, we'll be heading back to the boat and test fitting engines and doing all sorts of fun stuff. I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.